are listening to Coach's Corner with John Anderson on the CompuSports Radio Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Coach's Corner on the CompuSports Radio Network. I'm John Anderson, your host, and this week we're going to be talking to a coach down in Lubbock, Texas. His name is Blake Sanford. He's the wide receiver and strength coach down there at Coronado High School down in Lubbock, Texas. And down at Coronado High School in Lubbock, Texas, they run the flex bone. And we'll be talking to Coach Sanford about wide receiver techniques in the flex bone, as well as their weight training program. And Coach Sanford was a lot of fun to talk to. Blake Sanford, Coronado High School, Lubbock, Texas, next. Attention coaches, you're just a few clicks away from a chance to win a free coaching education courtesy of Glazer Clinics when you enter the CompuSports Radio Holiday Sweepstakes. Just complete a short survey that will take you two minutes or less. Tell us what you think about the Coach's Corner Radio Show and you will automatically be entered into a drawing for a free Glazer Clinics Season Pass. The Glazer Season Pass includes entrance to any or all 2012 Glazer Clinics the best in the country, unlimited 24-7 access to online clinics and webinars, coaches' choice instructional videos, speaker notes, and Glazer exclusive equipment discounts. Register to win by contacting me, your host, John Anderson, at john, J-O-H-N, at copiasportsradio.com or by visiting our website at www.copiasportsradio.com. No purchase necessary to win, please, one entry per household. This segment of Coach's Corner is sponsored by CompuSport, publisher of the EasyCut video editing software program. EasyCut works for any sport and starts at just $195. EasyCut, the affordable video editing software, available at CompuSport.com. My guest today is Blake Sanford. Uh, he is the strength and receiver coach at Coronado High School in Lubbock, Texas. And uh, for those of you, and maybe it rings a bell here a few weeks back, we had Coach James Vent on. Wasn't he at Coronado High School also? Yes, he is. Blake Sanford yeah. is one of his uh, cohorts out there, or maybe partners in crime, we should say, because Coach Vent and uh, Coach Sanford are teaming up to try to take over the 5A classification of Texas football. Are you not, Coach? Yes, sir. You know, we... We looked on the a wall of our uh, turf room, and there's just not enough banners that uh, signify any kind of football success. And we aim to change that, as, and we're, and we're going to change it through hard work. Is, is, is one of our main phrases that we tell the kids: is you can do a lot of things, but you can't get outworked. And it's and we're in complete control of what we do uh, between our minds. And mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's what we're trying to get a name for ourselves out there, and just trying to let these kids enjoy what it. People always complain about two days and the heat and the and the hard work and everything, but I've never heard anybody complain when they come out of that tunnel at Jerry Jones uh, Stadium in Dallas, Texas. They don't complain in December uh, because of all the hard work you do in the, in the July and August and September. You guys, especially yourself, Coach Sanford, you've got more weight room drills than Duncan has donuts. <laughs> that's that's the rumor on the street. Well. Well, I, I, I like to play around with the kids. Now, I, I do do the things beforehand, my own self, before I let them do it. And it's uh, it's kind of a funny thing to watch them say, you want me to do what? <laughs> but, uh, but uh, uh, you know, we get some big 270-pound boys trying to do a pull-up, and it's, uh, it's kind of funny at first, but before long, when they actually pull themselves up off the ground and get their chin above that bar, and they think, wow, I can do a pull-up now. And it's... Uh, it's pretty interesting to watch them do that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> well, I flunked pull-ups, so that's 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 why I'm you know four foot ten, three hundred and ten pounds. <laughs> no, I'm not quite that big. Right, let's talk about a little bit about your background. You've got an interesting background here. That uh, let's go ahead and talk about. Sure, I was uh, I was the smallest guy in junior high. In fact, I didn't even get a same color jersey. It was uh, it was one of those don't hit this guy kind of guy. Uh, I'm, I've always worn glasses, so it, when the Rex Specs first came out, I looked even funnier. We had a, you know, we had to 
kill to get the T-bar helmet back when I was playing, but eventually uh, puberty was good to me and I was able to grow. Uh, in fact, I did grow after I graduated high school. I wish I'd have had the size when I was in high school, but I didn't. But I was actually fortunate enough to play receiver in college at a small college, but I did get to play and uh, actually caught a pass, and that was that was pretty much a highlight. But I, but I always felt like I, I could coach and, uh, and and have a compassion for the little guy. And from then on, I started getting in the weight room, uh, experimenting with all that kind of stuff and, and getting some size on me. And, and obviously, when you get in the weight room and you start working out and you're doing that kind of thing, no matter what it is, no matter what your age, I've never met a man or a boy yet who hasn't, had, who hasn't done a workout and not looked in the mirror when he's done and he feels good about himself. And that's kind of the attitude I want to permeate with these kids. Uh, after they're done, to show off a little bit. We call it curls for girls. We don't do a lot of curls, but it's one of our funny phrases that we say in the weight room. But but from then on, I, when I went to college, I thought I was better than I was, and I transferred schools, and, and it didn't work out for me after I got through playing two years at one school. I went to another school, and I thought I was better than I was, and I wasn't. And I started playing rugby, and from the rugby uh, end of that deal, I, uh, I really started hitting the weight room hard and heavy and got to meet you know a, a few guys uh, Scott Warman at the time was a strength coach at, at the same Houston State, and his wife was Mary Ellen Jerumbo. And I got to meet with those two people, and Scott was at, at I think he was the third ranked powerlifter in the world at the time. And Mary Ellen Jerumbo, she was one of those uh, Rachel McLish girls that was on muscle and fitness. And uh, she was big into bodybuilding and strength training and all that kind of stuff. So I was able to talk and, and get some knowledge base from them. And, and I was able to go to Houston and work at Gold's Gym. Now, one of the things at Gold's Gym is they like to push getting memberships, but I didn't want to do a membership guy. I wanted to do the uh, strength training and fitness training for people, just general people. Well, the guy that was working out one day, was his name was uh, Joseph Dagnart, and his uh, his stage name or, or wrestling name was uh, Ivan Putsky. And I got to work out with him for a full summer, just me and him, and we were hitting it like we were old, old pals. And uh, he taught me a lot of stuff of... Uh, what he used to do across the continent. I can't remember exactly where he's from, but uh, he, uh, I guess he was a Polish assassin or something like that, but he was he was involved at one time in his career with the Olympic lifting for his country. And uh, so we've talked a lot, a lot about strength training and hitting it hard and heavy. And, and from then on, I just started studying and talking with people. I was able to talk to Dana LaDuke, who was at the time the strength coach at University of Texas, and, and just kind of get a general feel of what's going on. Now, the uh, when you're in a high school setting, you obviously have to tailor and, and you know, just kind of like a recipe. You help your kids the best you can. You can't really do everything you want to do in a single session. You have to. You have a lot of kids. You have limited facilities, and it's uh, you try to put them in the best position possible. So as I progress through, I've, I've coached in every classification in the state of Texas and it's uh, from 1A the small school to 5A the big school and each one of them has their own set of advantages or disadvantages and so we've always tried to make things work within that school within our kids. Some kids are great at lifting and some kids you know, didn't ever really like to be in the weight room. And ultimately we found that if we hit them early and teach them proper technique and teach them that it's okay to be in the weight room and it's okay to feel this that the end result will be a whole lot better once they get to 17 or 18 or 19 years old so it's uh it's been kind of a work in progress i i like uh i like new ideas i like talking to different people we get you know the guys at west side barbell in ohio i've talked with them i like crossfit uh where it's a general overall body strength training i like uh, aerobic i like uh yoga all that kind of different stuff we try to put in Everything that we can, even insanity videos with Sean T that they advertise on Beachbody on those infomercials. We we try to pull in everything that we can that might give our kids a little bit of an advantage or a little bit of a mindset or a little bit of a confidence factor uh, that'll get them to coming back. It's like a golf shot. You hit one good golf shot, it keeps you coming back, and it's uh, it's kind of one of those things. We we want them coming back. We want them fired up. And we want them to realize that you can do a lot of things, but you certainly can hang your hat in the weight room. We're talking with Coach Blake Sanford. He's the strength and receiver coach at Coronado High School in Lubbock, Texas. And we'll be right back with more Coach's Corner on the Copy of Sports Radio Network. All I want, all I want is you.
track your entire equipment and clothing inventory in real time with Athletic Equipment Manager. You'll know where it is and who has it. Quickly add or adjust inventory levels. A tag system assigns and tracks each piece. Look up the status of single items or groups of items. Assemble and print reports for each athlete or entire teams, any sport. And it works in single and multi-user mode. Even on your laptop, Athletic Equipment Manager puts you in control. Download it today and try it for free from CompuSports. CoachBook is an online network that allows sport coaches to connect and network with thousands of other coaches. Members can search for jobs while posting and viewing coaching articles and videos. Join us today at www.mycoachbook.com. Let me take you to a place in time where the top rolls down. The hippest cats and the coolest chicks play their radios loud. This segment of Coach's Corner is sponsored by CompuSport, distributor of the Playmaker Pro and Coach's Office playbook software packages, available at CompuSport.com. so new, Diana, Laura, Peggy, Sue, Coach Blake Sanford is my guest. He's the strength and receiver coach at Coronado High School in Lubbock, Texas. And down in Lubbock, Texas, at Coronado High School, they run the flex bone down there. You've got guys going back in motion and flying all over the place, and you're trying to hit the corner and doing all these things. But as a receiver coach, you do some things in your pregame and your individual group efforts. Tell us a little bit about that. I use a lot of stuff from Oklahoma State. Gunnar Brewer happens to be, uh, he's at Ole Miss now, but he was at Oklahoma State. and He and I talked and became pretty good friends, and, and we talked a lot about what it takes to be a, a quality receiver and stuff. like. And there's a lot of guys that put a lot of stuff out there. And you can spend a lot of time doing a whole lot of stuff, or you can, can concentrate on a few things and get really, really, really good at them. And so what we do, being a receiver in high school, it's, it's almost like a junior high setting. It, you're going to have some real big guys, and you're going to have your little bitty guys too. And they all have to be, they all have to be formidable when they get out on the field. And it's you never know when you're going to get caught, and you might need to dump it to somebody. And you can't always send your best receiver out there, or your so-called quote best receiver because you might your little slow guy might be the one who's open and he needs to be able to learn how to get separated and learn how to catch a football and learn how to get upfield and so we start every practice with footwork and cone drills for instance we'll start on the sideline i'll set four cones out and we just take our time and we work on our foot and our hand and our elbows in tight and we just we just work on plant we work on a stick foot we just we we, we actually say it we'll, we'll We'll run to the first cone, we'll stick it, and then we'll push off with that foot and go to the next cone and so on and so forth. And we do we do a four cone drill, we do a zigzag drill, and everything based on putting our foot in the ground, sticking it, and getting to the next cone without losing any speed. And we do those kind of cone drills, and then we progress into just separation techniques where we learn to get up on a defensive back and then pass the defensive back without trying to lose any speed. And we, we really try to run on the guy and then drop our hips. And, and, and without losing speed is, is probably the main thing. We, we do a lot of, I guess, hand drills where you, we call them Jackie Chans. I guess the guy at uh, SMU put that name out there, but it's, a, it's kind of a Jackie Chan drill. We don't, we don't sit there and work a whole lot on rip and swim. We just do one move where we just, it's kind of like wipe, wipe on, wipe off type of deal. We just, we get gone. That's the main thing. I want them to get gone. But the most important thing I tell them is the defensive back doesn't know right off the bat if it's going to be a run or pass unless you tell him it's going to be a run or pass. So if you come off that ball slow like it's a running play, then, then he's going to know immediately and it's just going to be all, he's going to spike immediately to the ball. So we take off as fast as we can, but now we have to be under control. And so our first drills, we probably spend the first if we've got 15 or 8, 14 minutes of a uh, individual setting, we'll, we'll spend probably the first five minutes just doing footwork drills. Any kind of footwork, we'll use the line. We'll start on one side of the yard line and run about, I don't know, seven yards down the field, stick one foot only across the line and plant and go. And we'll do a 90-degree turn and we'll plant and, and do a 45-degree, and then we'll plant and come to a complete stop. Everything's under body control. Everything's sticking foot and everything's getting gone. And we'll do that as our warm-up. We do it every single day. We do it in practice. We do it in games. And uh, that's, a, that's our warm-up. And it's just to get them in the mind frame of being a receiver. 
and, uh, and that's what we, we, we concentrate completely on that head turns, elbows in tight, hands moving, and all that kind of stuff. And then we come into where it's imaginary defender. I'll sit there about probably 10 yards away from them, and I want them to run as fast as they can. And as soon as they get to me, I want them to stop and run their hands and run their feet, and I don't want them to know that what they're fixing to do. And so we'll just kind of a lot of just general drills on, on just the footwork stuff. And, it, and, it, and, and there's no balls thrown at this time. We don't even mess with the balls. And then, and then we'll go straight into our blocking drills. And, and a couple of drills that we do that we, you know, I kind of stole off of uh, Navy is we'll run, we'll put some dummies out there. Now, we don't necessarily do this in the games, but this is our practice routine. We'll put some dummies on the ground. We'll probably put three lines or four lines. depends on how many receivers I have. And we'll put the hand shields on the ground. And so what we try to do is we're going to hit that hand shield as, as low as we can with our body. We're going to take off and dive like we're taking we're taking him out, and we're, we're big on cutting. We we cut like nobody's business, and it pisses everybody off. But when <laughs> people when when people play the Mustangs at Coronado, they better get their hands ready because we're going to try to take them out. And so what we try to do is we don't just dive and we don't just get out of control. We we take off and we hit that hand shield. And there's a kid that just he just holds it on the ground, and it just what we want to do is because we don't want them to be high and cut. We want them to be low and cut. But the trick is, once you cut somebody and you're just laying on the ground, he's, he's going to do a couple of things. He's going to either jump over you or he's going to kind of ole you, and, uh, and we don't want that. So we, we stress completely that we can't cut unless we're up on them. We have to get up on their feet. And so once we do try to cut that guy, we bear crawl past him. Kind of like the old scramble him. block. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. We'll scramble through him. And, uh, and that way we're back up and we're ready to go get another guy. And our big deal is we call it KO. It's a knockout. We, we, we don't grade on if he catches a touchdown pass. We'll give him a star if he catches a touchdown pass. But it's kind of like the outfielder in, in Little League Baseball. If the outfielder catches a fly ball, everybody stands claps. Well, that's what he's supposed to do. Well, in our mindset is we're supposed to block. And so you're not going to get too many kudos. Now, if you get him on the ground, we get you a star. And if you get two or three guys on the ground, then we'll reach to two or three stars. And we're going to, we point that out in our film session, and we, we make it a big, big, big deal. And it's uh, we have all these goals on our goal board of scoring so many times and, and, and no three and outs and all that kind of stuff, and KOs. KOs is the big one, and we make it a big deal, and we get everybody hooping and hollering when somebody gets on the ground. Well, we do the scramble block. And we put two, and then we do that one time through, and then we'll come back again. We'll put two dummies uh, in a line uh, right behind each other, and we'll scram- We'll cut the first one, scramble up, and cut the second one, and scramble up, and then hustle back to the end of the line. And then so you, that, where do you dummy, put me? Uh, Is the first dummy or the second dummy? Uh, first dummy. First dummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I got it. <laughs> I'm, I'm always the second dummy because I. I <laughs> Because I can't get it the first time around, so I got it. I'm always the second time. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we we just really just get after them and coach them up, and, and it's it's a hooping and hollering, and we and we start our practices like that, and we just we just make make it a point that, that they have to realize that they're not going to catch every single ball. They're not going to get every ball thrown to them. Not every play is designed to be a pass play thrown to them. And so they've got to understand that what are they going to do the rest of that time? So they're they're looking to be blockers, and we sell it, and we sell it, and we sell it. And before long, they have this feeling that they want to be the best blocking group in the state of Texas. So that's the attitude that we that we strive to have. You know, every time we come out to practice, every time we go into a game, that they are the best blocking because you know, and you know as well as I do. That once you get a guy on the ground and you block him and you're getting after him and all that kind of stuff, when it is time for a pass play to be thrown to you, that guy doesn't know if you're fixing to get up on his knees or if you're fixing to go past him and, and get to a curl or an out or a flag or a post or whatever route he's running. So the first part of that practice, we spend all our time running footwork stuff to prepare for route running. Then we go into blocking, kind of change it up a little bit, and then we'll come back and, and work our receiver drills. And it's worked out pretty well for us that we just kind of, because I get kind of bored too, but I also realize that, you know, we have to go fast. and we, we don't run 30 yards down the field on fly patterns. It just takes too long to get winded, and they don't have the great effort. So every time we run a pass, every time we run a block and play, it's short, it's sweet, but it's full speed, full bore, get after it, and let's go. So all of our route run, we'll run the 
It's a 12 yard out. We'll run the last four yards and work on the plant and then work on getting out of bounds or, or catching it and staying in bounds or getting upfield if they've got room. My guest is Blake Sanford. He is the strength and receiver coach at Coronado High School, Lubbock, Texas. We've been talking about receiver drills here so far out of the flex bone, and we'll be having a whole lot more with Coach Sanford. After this, you're listening to Coach's Corner on the Copy Sports Radio Network. Coaches Helping Coaches. We have all heard this is the message behind Jerry Campbell Football. Now, Coach Campbell has upgraded his website to make it easier for you to navigate and find material you need quickly to become a more effective and knowledgeable coach. Jerry Campbell Football has books and DVDs available, whether it be offense, defense, resume preparation, the kicking game, or PowerPoint training. Jerry Campbell Football has what you need to build your knowledge base. Whether from using a traditional approach to cutting-edge technology, you can enhance your knowledge in nearly any area. All this and more at www.jerrycampbellfootball.com. That's www.jerrycampbellfootball.com. Sanford is my guest here on Coach's Corner this week. He is the strength and receiver coach at Coronado High School in Lubbock, Texas. Coach, you wanted to talk a little bit about stock blocking. And to me, I don't think you get those 1,000-yard rushers with any kind of split receiver unless these guys are good blockers. That's exactly right. That's our big selling point to these guys because everybody's dad of a receiver, they want him to catch all the touchdown passes. Well, they can't catch them if we're not running the ball and running it effectively. So we've got to be able to be good blockers on the perimeter. And it is a big, big deal. Our head coach even comes down and and, uh, he makes sure that those guys are getting their ears scratched because he knows and and our offensive coordinator knows that our job is crucial. It is one of the most crucial things. We've got to get a snap. We've got to get the handoff. But uh, after that, that, that guy that's running that ball, he got to have the confidence in that perimeter receiver to be able to run off of that guy that's uh, trying to trip him up or whatever he's trying to do. So we we work, we, we can't cut every single play. That, that, that's just not going to happen. We're, sometimes we're just going to have to stalk him. And so we work a lot on the stop block. After we do all of our footwork drills and we do all of our, our, our uh, cut drills, we'll come into a stop block drill. And uh, several things we try to stress on, everybody's going to be a little bit different. But the main thing is you, you might have a, a big old defensive back or a linebacker or a safety that's out there, and we, we might be just a little little guy. And how is he going to block this big guy and, and spring him? Well, you don't need long. You just need, you just need a little bit. And so we, we stress on, on the distance it's going to vary between four to seven yards before we break down. But what we're looking at is we're looking at his waist and we're looking at his feet. Once, he sinks, once that defensive back sinks his hips, He's fixing to react to something because he sees through us to, to where the action's happening behind us. So once he sinks and he stops, we stop, and we drop our hips, and now we're in a good athletic position, kind of a free-throw shooting position or, or something like that where the hands are up. Now he's going to run one way or another. Once he decides that he's running a particular way, we're going to run with him. Now it's hard to change the direction of a defensive back once he makes his mind up he's going to that direction, but it's, it's easy once he decides that he's locked on and he's zeroed in on his target, we're going to run him. And we'll run him right across the field if we have to. Instead of trying to turn him and convince him to go another way, we're going to run him the way he's going because that's probably it's kind of a karate or judo type thing. We're going to use his body against him. And, uh, and what we try to do is we try, we, our hands are up. If our hands are down at, at our sides or at our thighs, we're not as effective. But if our hands are up, we're going to try to – Grab cloth, and we're going to grab it up above his above his chest, and we're trying to grab not around him, but inside of him, and try to grab his cloth first, and and, and try to be just as strong as we can, forceful, 
to run that guy, you know, wherever he wants to go. And if we have a chance to turn him, that's fine. But we're not letting go, and our feet are moving, and we're as hard as heavy as we can be. And we work on that uh, live. We do all of that as live as we can be. And if they're not live, then they're doing up-downs or running across the field and back and whatever. But that defensive back is in our practice session. He's got to be just as heavy as he can be. And one of the kind of drills we do is we'll do a – I'll be a quarterback. I'll set a defensive back, which is another receiver out there, and I'll set a receiver out on the perimeter and a, and a running back behind me. And I'll give a signal, and it's either a run play or a pass play. If it's a run play, then that defensive back, he's got to react to it, and we'll pitch the ball to the to the uh, running back. And if it's a pass play, then our guy's going to run just whatever route he wants to run, I'll throw him the ball. But that way, the defensive back in practice will not know what the play is. And so now that gives us a, <clears throat> probably a little bit better playing ground for our receiver to work at, at full speed. It's hard to get full speed all the time in practice, but that's, that's one of the things we stress because we don't go long, but we go hard. And so we'll work that stop drill over and over and over and get as good as we can at it. Because, And then now they have two blocks they can use. They can use a stop block and they can use a cut block, and that, it's, it's great. And uh, if you can just run him out of bounds, that's even better. But it's uh, but if, if you can't, then you're going to run in direction. We use him against, his, against himself, essentially. But our hands have to be inside, and we're locked on, and we don't let go. And then, uh, well, hopefully by then our our backs have done their job and they'll lead our butt and, and set the block up nice and all that kind of stuff. You know, I'm a receiver coach, but I also get out to the running backs. If they can't read what we're doing, then they're they're getting the wrath of me for long because we're out there fighting for our lives. And, and uh, especially if we got the runt guy against the big guy, that guy is, he doesn't have he can't hold him forever. But uh, mm-hmm. but we do we're, we do get hands on and we do get flagged for holding sometimes. But it's uh that's just part of the game, but it's uh, it's fun. It's uh, they have a good time with it, but it's it's just it's live. It's hard. It's heavy. We, uh, we throw the dummies away at that point, and we get after it. So it's uh, but it's all a matter of getting our hands on them. We, we don't. We do a lot of basketball drill type stuff and mm-hmm. where you're mirror, where you're mirroring without using your hands and all that kind of stuff. But essentially, once what what we really do is, like I said before, we really work on him. Once he plants, we plant, and then now we're ready to strike. It's just a matter of, you know, maintaining that block for as long as we possibly can. And once they do, even in practice, we throw a big party. You'd think that it was, you'd think that we'd won the state 5A championship after they make a good block, even in a, even in a, just a running drill in, uh, during a group setting in, in practice. It's a, it's a big deal. And we make every block, every great block, we make it a big deal. So I imagine you've got a lot of mirror drills that you're doing also in order to try to tone in that wide receiver's reaction time with that defender, you know, where he goes, I go, uh, if he goes this way, I go this way, and you're just basically trying to provide that little bit of off-color for your running back. You're trying to make that block and help the running back to set up that block because the receiver doesn't always know where the running back is going to go, so the running back has to give him a little bit of help. But once that defender commits, then that wide receiver has to be in a position to take advantage of that. You betcha, you betcha. And everything's under control. You know, I made a mistake early on in my career where I would just, I'd want to attack that guy as fast as we could and get on him. But, you know, those defensive backs, they're pretty good, too. And they're coached well, and they sidestep us, and, and they're making the tackle. We're looking like we're just a bunch of idiots because we missed him. We take off fast. Our first two or three steps are going to be as fast as we can. But then, once that's happened, now we're, we're in complete control of our body. Where our butts are low, we're running at him, and, and our hands are moving fast, and you know, it's kind of like we're playing the drums with our hands, but our hands are up. The hands are down, we're not as effective, but if our hands are up and that back has done a great job, like you said, of setting up that block, then, that, then we, we run him. We might run him right to where the direction of the back is going, but that back can, of course, plant and get gone and get past us. But uh, we may run that guy right back into the center. He may come from the perimeter, and that defensive back sitting over there where the center and the nose guard are. But that's, uh, that's all fine and dandy because he's not making the tackle. That's, uh, that's our number one goal. Our guy cannot make the tackle. And one of our rules is, uh, as an offensive team, is linebackers can't cover and defensive backs can't tackle. That's, that's what we tell our kids. And so that's how we set up our pass plays. That's how we set up our running plays. And that guy, that guy definitely is not going to make the tackle. Somebody else might, but that defensive back cornerback is not going to make a tackle if that run, if that run plays come to my side. 
Coach Blake Sanford is my guest this week. He's the strength and receiver coach at Coronado High School in Lubbock, Texas. And we'll be talking more drills with the flex bone when we come back. You're listening to Coach's Corner on the Compu Sports Radio Network. Welcome to CoachingWare.com, a multi-sport online software store from CompuSports, a recognized name in coaching software for over 25 years. Software for scoring and statistics, playbooks, scouting and video editing, recruiting and equipment inventory, online resources and tech support by live chat, email and phone. Order online 24-7 with several payment options. Get free shipping, express delivery or instant digital downloads. Quality coaching software from leading publishers in one place. Coachingware.com This segment of Coach's Corner is sponsored by CompuSports, publisher of Athletic Equipment Manager Software, the affordable sports inventory software that starts at just $199. Available at CompuSports.com. Coach Blake Shelton is my guest. He's the strength and receiver coach at Coronado High School in Lubbock, Texas, and they run the flex bone down at Coronado. And, uh, Coach, I don't know if you're familiar with this drill. This is something that we instituted many years ago. The drill was named after cornerback Mel Blunt of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And uh, I'm sure you, you are familiar with that name. This guy was built like a panther. I mean, if you wanted a guy who's a shutdown corner with muscle, this was the guy. Uh, I think he could have played linebacker. He was that fast and he was that strong. And one of the things that we did, and we would get into our individual drills, we would call the Mel Blunt drill. And the smaller guys hated this drill. And I'll tell you why. We would get a linebacker and sit him in press position on the line of scrimmage. And we wanted to disrupt that wide receiver as much as possible. And this linebacker would be right across the guy, a yard off the line of scrimmage, Maybe two, depending upon the type of receiver he was across from him at the time. He would try to get his hands on him and try to disrupt him. And then we would have a defensive back right behind him, some of the faster defensive backs, that would run behind these wide receivers and try to, to play that takeout role. So that they had an idea of what they were facing if they were coming across the shutdown corner type of guy. Because one of the reasons that you started getting these hands-off drills in the NFL early on was because Mel Blunt was taking them out. Throwing them ground, you know, pitch them over in the sideline, throw them through the pizza container. I mean, it didn't make, he did whatever he had to do, and he was very good at it. So they made this rule because Mel Blunt was so good. So we created the drill that we're going to have a big guy there to get his hands on you. You've got to get around him, and then you have to run like the wind because this guy's fast, too, who's behind him. That's right. <laughs> Uh, we uh, we that, that's great. That's uh, and that happens because you know it again the receivers they they're in various degrees of puberty in high school and it's uh, but those seems like every defensive back we get is just trying to maul us and uh, and so yeah we we do something exactly similar we we'll set a defensive back into a press position and he's just going to stand there and we'll we'll put each receiver on a yard line so we're all five yards apart. And I'll tell them, okay, we got an inside press, and I'm on one side so I signify the ball. And let's say we got to get inside of an inside press. You know, for instance, if it's on the goal line, we got to run a slant on the goal line. And this is before we get into the, if he's pressing us, that we won't go in the goal line, and we'll kind of deke him and do all those kinds of things. But if we have to run an inside route, a slant, quick slant, anything like that, to an inside press, we're going to attack him with one foot at him. So if it's a... If I'm lined up on the right and our defense back's on our immediate left pressing us, we'll step at him with our left foot. It's just a quick foot step. Immediately, once that foot hits the ground, our right foot is going to step away from him. What the what the what we're hoping to do is once we step at him and immediately away from him, he's going to take that outside 
of his outside foot and go with us. Now, once he steps with it, with us to our outside, that's when we're coming up underneath him, and we're going to rip through him or swim over him and, and anything like that. But our hands are up, and then I mentioned before we're going to do a Jackie Chan move where once he puts his hands ready to run us out of bounds or run us away, that's when our hands are slapping his hands, and we're coming past him and under him as quick as we can. So it's, we call it a two-step move. So we're stepping at him, stepping away from him, and back up underneath him. And we work on those steps like nobody's business. It's just one, two, boom. And it's always quick feet, short steps. And it's, uh, we, we, we're hoping that once he takes us on our second step, that's when we react and come back underneath. And it's, it's fast. But we have to have our hands up. And a lot of times, youngsters, they, they have their hands down. And once, that, once those receivers have their hands down, well, they're at the mercy of what the guy wants them to do. And we can't do that. We have to be, we have to be the aggressive guy. And nobody says a receiver can't be aggressive. And I tell them all the time, by God, this is not a church social. You've got to get off the line of scrimmage. If you're not off the line of scrimmage, then you're going to be sitting here by me. And we get to watch the game, you know, with a great view. But if you want to get on, if you want to get, you know, a pass on to you, particularly a slant, because a slant pattern on a goal line setting, or if it's a quick slant anyway, it's going to come fast. It's a, it's a one-two boom. The quarterback the ball's in the air, and it's it's a, it's Katie bar the door. Uh, but if it's uh, if you're never off the line of scrimmage, and you know he's nobody to throw to, and he's got to scramble and go to the second receiver, or whatever. But it's a, uh, it's just a step at him, step away from him, and back underneath him. And uh, so we'll work those two. No, it's a two-step move. And if he's an outside press and we got to run a quick slant, then it's just get get gone. We might, if we're slow, we might run a step at him and then back inside. But most of the time, that inside press versus a slant is, is tough. And we work it, work it, work it with a stationary defensive back, and then we'll we'll make that defensive back simulate that he's getting faked out. And that gives that guy a chance to see, oh, this is what how that happens. I step at him, I step away from him, and he steps with me when I stepped away from him. And then here I come underneath him. And I'm looking for the ball with my head open, my head on a swivel ready for it. It's just coming now. And it's uh, it's quite interesting to watch him do all these steps they've never even had to do before. And, it, and we're all within a framework of three yards. We, we're not downfield. We're not running far. We're not out of breath. And we can go fast, fast, fast. And it's, uh, it's really interesting to watch him. Watch them get open uh, against the press coverage, and it's even the slow guys do it because they can run the feet fast in a you know two by two square box, and we'll work that every day. Every day we do it. And it's kind of the kind of get good at a few things and get and do them over and over and over and over. And they know their routine, and I don't even have to be there before long. I, I, I can go water the grass if I need to. They, they run these drills. They know what's next, and it's just kind of a menu item. And it's uh, it's really neat to watch them work. We're talking with Blake Sanford. He's the receiver and strength coach at Coronado High School, Lubbock, Texas. And we'll be talking about some of the coaches' favorite stuff here coming up in the next segment. You're listening to Coach's Corner on the CompuSports Radio Network. If you are interested in becoming a sponsor on Coach's Corner on the Copy Sports Radio Network and you'd like to place your commercial right here on this program, just email me, John, J O H N, at CompuSportsRadio.com. That's John, J O H N, at CompuSportsRadio.com. In the meantime, let's enjoy a little bit of Cookie Cutter Girl from the state of Maine for, oh, about 30 seconds or so. Without you Join the Glacier Clinics in 2012 for 30 football clinics across the country. Come learn the newest techniques and trends from the nation's top NFL, college, and high school football coaches. The staff season pass is only $329, and that gets all your school's coaches into all 30 clinics nationwide. 
Plus, your staff season pass gives your coaches access to 10 e-clinics, webinars throughout the year, and access to Glacier Clinic Online, our online database full of instructional videos and clinic notes. Register now for up-to-the-minute speaker schedules at glazierclinics.com. That's glazierclinics.com. Coach Blake Sanford is my guest this week, strength and receiver coach at Coronado High School, Lubbock, Texas. And the coach has just been waiting and chomping at the bit to get to this next topic. <laughs> Since he's also the strength coach down there at uh, Coronado High School, coach, when you're in season, what are the things that you really concentrate on with the football team in the weight room? Well, we're not in there long, so we're, it's, a, it's a short session because we we do a lot of things during the school day, and we don't try to hold them until nine or ten o'clock at night. So we've got to accomplish a lot of stuff. We've done it a whole lot of ways at different schools, and it's. Uh, we found that if we're short and sweet and compact and effective, that's kind of what we're striving to do. Well, when we come into that weight room, if they're not coming into work, I send them right back out. And I'm at the door of the weight room just like a teacher's at the door of a classroom. And I tell, you, and I tell them as they're gathered up in the hallway, whichever group's coming, it may be a, a varsity group coming or a JV group or it may be a lineman group coming. It's a particular day that we just want the lineman lifting first and then the the backs and receivers are lifting second. With whoever, with it, whatever group's coming in, I line up at the, at the outside in the hallway, and I say, if you're not coming in here to work, you stay outside. You find something else to do. You go pick up trash. You do something. But you do not come into this workroom unless you're willing to work and unless you're willing to support your teammate. And once that's established, once that mindset's established, then I'll gather them up in the middle of the weight room, and I'll explain to them exactly what we're doing. And I'll line up all the drills that are written up on our chalkboards everywhere, and so they know once I explain everything that they can look back and see what the reps and sets and, and exercises are. So we'll line up, and what we try to do is anything that's movement-based, we'll try to do it first. Obviously, before we come into the weight room, we're, we're, uh, we've already warmed up. We've, we've got dynamic stretch. We've done our core work. We've done all that kind of stuff. So our body is warmed up, blood's flowing, ready to go. So I'll line them up, and I'll tell them, okay, this is, this is kind of what we're going to do. It's a... We may lift in season, since we're talking about November lifting and all that kind of. If it's a fall lifting season, we're going to, we're shooting for a two lift lift, and we'll do two lifts that day because we're short, we're sweet. It's maintaining, it's injury prevention, and all that kind of stuff. We've done most of our hard work in two days and in the summer, and of course, obviously off season. So during our season lifts, we're going to lift two lifts. Now every two lifts obviously has some. Uh, we superset everything. I like to I like to tax them, but I don't want to tax them too much where they can't run and be effective. So we're gonna our three days of lifting are typically depends on if we're playing on Thursday or Friday nights because some of our games are our varsity high school games are on Thursday nights on some 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 occasions. We're gonna lift two days a week. If it's a Friday game, we're gonna lift Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Uh, so it's it's a Monday lift, in, and all those tests are gonna have. A movement lift, which is either a hang clean, power snatch, or a thruster, or something like that. Now, if it's a hang clean, we'll do it first. It may be a hang clean squat day, and so we're going to do a hang clean. Now, you don't need the necessary spot with the hang clean. So the hang clean guy, he's doing his thing. Well, the the partner, he may be doing something else. He may be working on an explosion movement with a with a dumbbell, a dumbbell sumo dumbbell upright row, or something like that. And, and it just varies. But every day they come in there, they don't know what they're doing. We never want to do the same thing. We always want to keep on guessing. It, it becomes quite cool for the kids because they, they don't know what to do And then until they come in. Oh, yeah. And then, then they kind of get fired up about it. But they'll, they'll do anything from getting a medicine ball and throwing it up and doing a squat with the medicine ball and throwing it up against the wall. They'll do a burpee, a burpee pull-up uh, where they do an up-down and then jump right up and pull themselves up and do that over and over and over. And I go by time. I don't go by sets and reps. I'm going to go by time. If I get 20 minutes in the weight room, well, I'm going to I'm going to do this particular exercise. I'm going to do it by time. We'll we'll go five, seven, eight minutes, whatever whatever it takes, and we're just going to work, work, work. Now our movement our movement type stuff is uh, it's a lower reps. We don't ever want to get above five or six reps. Typically it's four to five reps. Once, and once they do those, are doing those harder than those fast. And, and in the meantime, the partner's doing something. Now, if it's a squat, obviously, we're uh, we're spotting heavily on the squat, spot heavily on the bench. 
everything is low. We want our butt below our knees uh, on anything that we drop or, because our hip flexion, our, uh, our ankle flexibility, all that's very, very important. And I tell them, you strip the weight if you can't get your butt low. And we'll put plates under their heels, we'll put boards under the heels, anything to give them at a great angle because some kids just are not flexible at all. And so we work, we work tremendously long on the, on the uh, proper form of getting low. It does us no good to go a three-quarter squat on the squat, for instance. And it does us no good to do a, do a hang clean if we're not able to lift it and, and, and do it explosively. And it's almost, uh, it's almost, when I get my other coaches in there, we grade, we grade them on speed. Uh, on the hang clean, we grade them on speed from thigh to, to, to our catch position. And so everything's fast. If they're not fast, we take the weight back off, and we, we tell them we got to go fast. And it's, it's all fast, fast, fast. Squats all low, low, low. And we, we bust at them, and they tell them that we're not looking at you. Quit looking at your partner who's doing four or five plates on each side. You, you worry about yourself when you get your butt low. And it's uh, so, for instance, they're coming into the weight room. And, uh, and I'll tell them, okay, we're doing hang clean four sets of five or whatever it is, or we're going to work five or seven minutes, or whatever whatever the course of the menu is today. And I said, this is how you're doing it. This is what we're looking for. I want your knuckles facing the ground. I want explosion from uh, from your knee or your your second position to your catch position. It's got to be fast. We don't try to jump up too high because once you're in the air, you, you lose you lose your your strength. There's no strength to be gained from jumping high in the air. But we do want a foot stomp, and we want a quick, power, explosion foot stomp. And everything's kind of a, a Olympic movement or Olympic power lifting movement. So we line them up. I tell them what we're doing, and then the first things I say is hit hit, and then they're supposed to say go to work. So the last thing they say, and the last thing that's even said before they even begin. The procession of lifting is to go to work, and that gets them another way to get their minds right and get their mind focused on what the task is at hand. If they get done with it, if they if I say it's four sets of five or five sets of five or whatever it may be, if they do get done, then there there's no sitting and waiting and watching the other guy. They get in another set or they go into another auxiliary lift. Uh, we might do reverse curls. We'll do more pull ups. We'll do up downs. We'll do uh, upright rows. All kinds of things that I just pull from the menu. And then the menu is anything. The menu could be something I saw on Lifetime Fitness Channel. It might be anything, but it's uh, they're doing something. We'll do floor wipers where they hold the bar above their head, laying on a bench, and work the core more. Anything. But it's always about grip. Now I mentioned earlier we were talking about grip because our receivers have to grip the jersey, or our offensive linemen have to grip our. Our guys on defense have to be able to grip to get somebody down. Everything's good. We don't sit the bar down until we're done. We don't rest and re-rack and then start again. If we're, if we're doing four sets of a power clean or hang clean, then we're going to hold that bar through the, four, through, through the five reps, and then we can set it down, rack, and then the next guy can go. But we're always holding on. If we're doing pull-ups, we're holding on as long as we can until we obviously can't hold on. But everything's about grip, everything's about explosion, everything's about movement, everything's about working hard, and it's about... But one of probably the most important things to do is I'm going to encourage... If you're my partner, then I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to take the focus off of my pain and, and encourage you and try to support you. That's another way we can build our camaraderie or our teammate ship and all that kind of stuff. But uh, a typical day might be... Monday might be hang clean and squat. And then, and then Wednesday might be a lower body day, I mean upper body day, it might be a bench and a hang snatch. And then Saturday's going to probably be a full body, do four lifts or five lifts and then call it good because that's our day after our game. But our, and, and now, if we do hang clean on Monday of particular week A, we'll come back with something else on the next Monday. We won't necessarily do hang clean. We might do a high pull. We might do a hang snatch. It, uh, and we might just switch it up. It, it just depends. A split jerk. Any of those things. And whatever we do on Monday, we don't do on Wednesday. Coach Blake Sanford is my guest. He is the strength and receiver coach at Coronado High School in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, you've got Texas Tech right around the corner from y'all, don't you? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I talk and work out with those guys. I usually work out with them on Fridays during the summer. And it's uh, that's been quite beneficial to me as well. In fact, the strength coach, his son, his, both of his sons came to our football camp early in the summer. It was uh, it was neat to get to talk with that guy. In fact, it, he's from a town that I used to coach at in Sweetwater. It's not too, too far from here. All right, I'm going to be asking Coach Sanford some questions here in the next segment. You're listening to Coach's Corner on the Compton Sports Radio Network. Yeah, 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 
Some of you folks are aware of OptionCentral.net. Some of you may even have had a membership to OptionCentral.net at one time. What many folks don't know is that Option Central has become the premier site for all things option football, with contributions from coaches from Massachusetts to California, from coaches like Jay DeCan, Larry Beckish, James Vint, Charles Wilson, Johnny Anucci, and many others. Option Central is the place to learn many of the concepts that can help you with ideas for offensive success. And anyone who has heard this program for any length of time knows that I give defensive guys a hard time. But there are even a few articles that they can benefit from as well. There are even a few videos up there, too. OptionCentral.net. I'm there, and you should be, too. This is the CompuSports Radio Network. I have a dream that all men are created equal. Salam. Hola. Salam. 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 Coach Blake Sanford is my guest. He's the strength and receiver coach at Coronado High School in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, they are making a concerted effort to try to take the 5A crown down in Texas here this coming year. All right, Coach, are you up in the press box or are you down the sideline on game night? I have been both throughout my career here lately. In the last several years, I have been down on the sideline. I've been fortunate enough to – I got a, I got somewhat of a – a mindset, a gift, I guess you might say, of having a calm. I'm not calm any other time of the of the week, but on Friday nights, for some reason, clarity is good to me, and it's uh, I'm on the sideline and I'm helping get personnel and helping the head coach with decisions and all that kind of stuff. So yes, sir, I'm a, I'm down on the sideline. It's a, I, I like to think of myself as a, as a conductor of a game. I like to. Makes, I'm, I'm fully aware of timeouts. I'm fully aware of how much time we need, how, where the ball is spotted, all that, uh, who's referee, what, what, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's kind of my job to make sure to help the head coach with his game management. He, he probably doesn't need much help, but he, he certainly relies on me for that kind of stuff. And then my main job is personnel. I make sure that we got the right personnel in the game at the right time. We don't want any penalties of having too many men on the field or not enough men or not the right personnel. We don't want to break the huddle with 12 or anything like that, and that's my main job. And it, It's uh, something I take very serious. It's, uh, it's important. You need, you need your best effort and you need your best coaching effort, you know, your kids and your coaches. So we dial in. And we're, we're, our grease gets hot, and uh, we, we certainly are fully aware of what's going on, but we make sure that you know, I even make sure our coaches are dialed in and they're paying attention because if somebody gets hurt, I need to know who gets hurt. I need to know if he's going to be able to get back in the game. I need to know how many how many people are available for this and that and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we got we got a special teams coach. We got offense coordinators in, up in the box. We got defensive coordinators on the field, and we got me. And it's uh, it's just part of the game management and personnel type stuff that that I kind of offer to to our head coach and, our, and to our football program. Let's go ahead and give your head coach some props. Who is your head coach? Our head coach is, is Kent Jackson. He's been one of the one of the leaders in here in Texas, certainly here lately. He's very well respected, great Christian man. He's been on the board of directors of the Texas High School State Coaches Association, and in fact, was even nominated to uh, to become the president of the association, which is one of the biggest in the nation, if not the biggest. And he is uh, very well respected. He's a great man in church. He leads. Choir. He does a lot of good stuff. Matter of fact, he's put me up for the weekend while he's out on vacation. I get to stay in his nice house instead of my little old place. So it's uh, that's been real nice. But he, uh, he and I have been friends for a good long time. We've coached against each other, and, and I got a chance to coach with each other, and, and have been stuck like glue ever since. We we go to the same movies and listen to the same music, and we eat the same food. And uh, he, uh, he and I just kind of kind of bonded and 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 worked together real well. I'm. Uh, I wear a lot of hats for him, but I'm, I'm kind of his secretary, kind of his right hand man, and take care of all the stuff that he needs taken care of when he's not there. And he, uh, but boy, he's got it under control. That's one thing that Kent does real well is he he is a great organizer of men and uh, and young men, and he's a, he's been a role model for many many kids. And he 
He does just does a great job. He, and, and one of his, one of his attributes that I like to think about that he does real well is he brings the community together for the sole purpose of athletics and and being the campus coordinator and or athletic director what one of the things he does is he he worries about everything he worries about the other sports it's not just about football but it's about growing up people and uh one of his sayings that that we always say it's not the x's and o's but it's the jimmies and joes and that's been said a lot by a lot of people but we we uphold that every single day and we, we, we take our time and we, we go watch other sports and we watch other coaches and we hug on all the kids and all the other sports. And uh, it's just a, he does a great job of doing that kind of stuff. In fact, he's got two boys that play for us and one of the boys I actually coach. And it's uh, one of those kind of unique relationships. And he does a good job. He's been a daddy to a lot of, a lot of kids throughout the years. Okay, now let's get back to you. Uh, I've, got, I've got some questions that uh, may or may not take you by surprise here. Okay. Right. You're on the sideline. All of coaches, we we all know what the answers to these questions are for our own particular selves. So it's it's, uh, it's not something that we're going to surprise anybody with, uh, because everybody else has seen it too. Let's see. Your offense is on the field. Your near receiver goes down and gets basically pitched by the defensive back. Do you a absolutely blow a gasket and yell and scream at him? Do you two kind of give him the look, or? Number three, do you let the head coach yell? <laughs> or is it well, D, none of the above? I do a very, very, I try very, very hard not to get after a kid right there on the sidelines. I, I call it haze in the barn uh, throughout the week. If I'm going to get after somebody, it's going to be during the week leading up to the game. During the game, if he's, you know, if he's not getting it done, if he's just getting tossed around like a rag doll, then I'm, I, A, I need to find a better position for him or put him in a better position so that he can be successful. When somebody asks us how our team is, I tell them that we'll know in 15, 20 years after they've graduated and after they've left us what kind of mark did I make on them later on in life. So getting after him particularly, in, now that doesn't mean I don't just get, you know, fuss at him a little bit, but I'm not going to blow a gasket at him. I, he may not go back in the game for a while, but uh, I also like to have a short memory. Uh, he may not, he may mess up on this play, but that doesn't mean he's going to mess up, you know, two plays later. It's kind of like the guy in baseball. He may strike out in the first inning, but that does not mean he's going to strike out the next time he gets up to bat. And so his confidence level as a young high school kid has got to be as high as we can make it. And I, be- I truly believe a coach can ruin the confidence of a kid quickly. Mm-hmm. He, he won't he won't be effective at all later on down the line because that kid may get us a block. He may get us a block at, in the fourth quarter with two minutes left that's going to win us a ball game. That's a great answer. When I first started coaching, I, I was a raving maniac, and I'll be the first to admit. But as I began to kind of calm down a little bit and see what was going on, uh, it's like you said, you're not going to win every play. And just because you might get bounced the first time or two doesn't mean that you're going to make the adju- or you're not going to make the adjustments as you go along and make that a learning experience. Oh, yeah. Uh, remember when Jackie Smith dropped it? touchdown in the end zone for the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, yes. Over. Yes, I remember that. And he's in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Smith's in the Hall of Fame as a tight end. But he dropped that pass. Everybody was just going nuts about how could he do that. And I just I always thought about him and I always wondered what his coaches said to him after that was over and what his teammates say to him. I know what I say to the Kitty Cops pass. I said, well, you're going to get the next one. You've, you've worked so hard to get the next one. You can't worry about what's happened while ago but you can worry about what's in your head right now and what you can do the next play out. And more times than not, those kids go out there and they and they, they do. They, they get after the next play. They make a great block. And it goes back to what I was saying earlier. We just jump up and down and we hug them and we scratch your ears if they do something even remotely good. Because nine times out of ten, everybody sees what you don't do and they never see what you do do. And then you might be painting a wall, and, and you get every wall painted, but if you miss one spot, most people see the spot you miss instead of the beautiful paint job you did for the rest of the walls. Well, I don't believe in that. I believe in finding something that they did right and, and loving on them for what they do. It's, it's a game, but it, it's a game that requires great effort and great commitment, and it requires commitment from them, but they need to know that they've got commitment from me, and they get, they get it every day. They don't know if I've got troubles at home. They don't know if I've got bills, and they don't know anything. They get my best effort because that's everything. Every day I come in, 
they, uh, my grease is hot, and I want their grease to be hot when they come in because they got a million things they can be doing too. And it's, uh, we want it to be just a great, great experience, both in game and in practice. And it's, uh, you don't want your games to be just a toil and turmoil just just because coaches are just ripping them left, right, and center. I just, I don't believe in that. We don't cuss at our kids. We don't, we don't get after them at all. We, uh, we, we could have moms be on our sidelines and they'd never hear a cuss word from us. You used to like to get the parents involved, at least in the practices, and explain to them if, you have a problem, and sometimes you're dealing with single parents. Uh, if you've got a problem with them and they're out of line or, or they're giving you a hard time, let me know about it. We'll take care of that right here. And uh, that seemed to get a lot of parental support right from the get-go. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And we take the playing time equation out. Playing time is big, especially with dads that are sitting in the stands and they're sitting next to other dads and the if one particular dad, his son doesn't get to play a whole lot, we, we talk to those parents at the beginning of the year, and we talk about playing time, and then I talk to my kids, and our other coaches talk to their kids about playing time, because it's a big social deal. Everybody wants their kid to be the star, and everybody wants their kid to be in the paper. And sure they do. Stuff. But it, and, it's, and they only have eyes for their child, which is normal, which is the way it's supposed to be. But we talk to the kids, and we sell ourselves, and we sell our program, and we sell the fact that they are a part of something a lot bigger than just them. We try to take them and, and move the selfishness out and become one and become a team. Is it hard? No, oh, yeah, it's hard, but we do it every single moment that we can. Every single moment. We, it's teachable moments, every time. Games, practices, gatherings, team buildings, all that kind of stuff that we do. It's, it's all about not being selfish. And, and thinking about something bigger than yourself. Coach, it's been great to have you on the program, and uh, we'll have to get you and, and maybe uh, some of your cohorts on at the same time next time. Oh, that'd be fantastic. I just had a blast. I could go on and on. Uh, you've done a great job with this. And I, I'm truly honored to be a part of this a, a part of this radio show. Thank you very much, sir. Coach Blake Sanford, the strength and receiver coach down at Coronado High School in Lubbock, Texas. Coach, if anybody's got a uh, question for you, what do you have a contact number or an email? I, I, oh yes, I sure do. My uh, cell phone is uh, area code five one two nine one three zero two five zero five one two nine one three zero two five zero, and my email is b sanford s a n d f o r d b sanford at lubbock i s d dot org o r g, and I'd be more than happy to talk till the day is done about receivers, about weight training, about anything that we do, our program in general. Uh, I'm just, I, I, I go on and on about the, what we do, and I believe in what we do, and I think you know, eventually good things are going to happen to good people, and good things are going to happen to the Mustangs that love Coronado. Absolutely. Thank you very much, sir, for coming back on the show. You betcha. Thank you. For the rest of you, some final thoughts right after this. A great big thank you to Coach Blake Sanford for coming on to the program and educating yours truly. And if you didn't get his contact information, just go ahead and email me at john, J-O-H-N, at copiesportsradio.com, and I will forward that along to you. Next week on Coach's Corner. Next week, we're going to have Gerard Dotson, the secondary coach from Old Dominion University. We're going to be talking about secondary play, and this was a great interview. You're not going to want to miss this one either. And next week, we should have a winner announced as to who won the year-long Glazer Clinic membership on our next show. Coach's Corner is an Abundant Harvest production on the CompuSports Radio Network. I'm John Anderson. We'll see you next time.